Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And I'm Noel McAvoy. That and was... that flowed. Oh, darn. <laughs> that, that was ASAP Bad and I on piano. ASAP, what tune was that? That was a song called Paper Doll. Nice, nice. I like it. It's very melodic. <laughs> that, yeah. I was about to say that flowed smoothly, but then I didn't. And then it just didn't. It just yeah. doesn't. It's never going to flow smoothly. I know. We need to like have a script or something for our intro. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying. We're and trying, it's, uh, trying. it's getting there. So um, uh, Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. As of Wednesday. Day, we were uh, MCAT was indoctrinated into the um, uh, Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. by the Missoula Chamber Rangers and um, yeah we're gonna show you a video of uh, of the uh, ribbon cutting so here's a little taste of that <laughs> I just don't want you to cut anybody these are bigger than I am ready okay so on three oh, oh, two oh, yeah. three on cut. three <laughs> okay, okay. just man, we gotta get our side little, little right in there. there hold it tight there we go I'm gonna count on three one As you, um, of course, as you can see, that you can't see anything. Yeah, as you guys can see, you can see it back. But if you heard that cutting of the ribbon, yes, I cut it, and the, then I shook the sound it and indicated the cut. And of course, uh, if you go to the Chamber of Commerce uh, website, you can see our picture. Hopefully, I haven't actually checked. I think so. I'm just, I'm assuming that it's it's gonna be on the website I would think, yes, of us, it is. They like, came, holding a sign and cutting the ribbon. They came on Wednesday, um, and I emailed them like as soon as they left to like give them our info, and she said that they get it up on their social media. Cool. So it should be up, yeah. yes. And um, they say that they, um, um, they gave us a dollar of pure profit. Yes, yeah. Which but is ironic non because MCAT is a um, non-profit. Yeah, so that's our only dollar of profit. Yes. <laughs> Good job, MCAT. Um, <laughs> it's cool. It uh, started raining this morning when I uh, came into work. Um, yeah. But of course, um, it should be uh, most partly cloudy later tonight um, when we do an, any of this high school sports. But of course, it is currently 57 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 69. Your low is going to be 42. And then, of course, high Saturday is going to be 71. It's going to be a nice day on Saturday, but then by the Saturday night, it, it, there is a 50 to 90 percent chance of showers, including that it will go on through your Labor Day weekend. I, I was Woo. thinking about going camping this weekend, but after looking at those temperatures, I'm not sure if I want to be wet all weekend. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. It's just like it just kind of blew in from out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey guys, so bye summer. Yeah. <laughs> Fall is here. It's gonna rain on you. Yeah, you Labor Day weekend, and, and we're not gonna be back on Monday, so that's another thing. Uh -huh. um, you guys will be able to sleep in on Monday, but we'll be back live again on Wednesday. Yes, but of so course, another thing that's gonna be live is um, the sports sports tonight oh, on MCAT. Huh? So um, MCAT, um, they do a live stream of, uh, I mean, live stream and broadcast of the Sentinel High School football team. And if they're doing any away games that week, we're gonna be doing volleyball. So it's a mixture between football and volleyball. So we'll be doing that this year for during the fall season up until the end of October. We'll take maybe like a month or two off and then we'll probably start doing basketball and wrestling for the spring. But of course, uh, I have a little video. This is our, um, a football game from, um, I believe this is from last Friday. A week it's, ago. This is played from Washington Grizzly Stadium, the one and only place, and I was like sitting on the ground most of the time because nobody gave us a table. Come on! Really? Anyways, yeah, I was. That's it, super lame. It's super lame. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> here is a little taste of what you guys will be seeing tonight on MCAT starting at 7 p.m. Wow, I mean, it, the, you know, the interesting thing is there's not even really much contact on some of these hits, and the ball is just kind of squirting out, Kempson. So, I think if you're going to take one thing in the locker room for Billing Senior, hey, we got to take care of the ball. Right now, they have two turnovers. Sentinel doesn't have any turnovers. What does show one play? Yeah, it's 23 0. <laughs> so, very uncharacteristic of a Billing Senior team that led the state with a plus 13 turnover margin last year. Missoula Sentinel was just even. Brandon Morley is at quarterback, and he's throwing deep, wow. looking for Mitch Roberts. All right, so of course, you'll see that kind of stuff happening tonight on MCAT Channel 189. Uh, but of course, I do have some new programming. Of course, it's not necessarily new new, but it's like old new. But it's, uh, th we're talking about, there's my um, show I produce, which is uh, Look Before You Speak. It's an art appreciation show with uh, former art curator uh, Steve Lukert from the Missoula Art Museum. Um, and he's talking with uh, Valerie Hedquist, and they're talking about Vincent Van Gogh and how he was more popular when he died than when he was alive. 
<laughs> which is sad. It happens. It so. really is sad. That's kind of how it it's is. It's hard to be an artist you uh, get unless, more, unless you're dead. Jesus Christ, Scott. You get more popular as you uh, when you die Yeah, yeah. than when you're alive. Yeah, and, and based on how you die, if you have a controversial death, your art's worth even more. Mm-hmm. All right, anyways. <laughs> and then, of course, we have Pain Conference. It's num- part number four, and it's happening tomorrow. So tonight and tomorrow night, basically... Um, around the prime times is where you can see these programs. So check it out on MCAT 189, and when we come back, we'll have events with Noel. To Joe, the sister-in-law. And then she was the one, of course, who um, was um, in, in charge of getting rid of the paintings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's dispose of them. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Well, and I think that that just goes to his life. I mean, the way the work was treated initially is right. the way that he himself was treated. Yeah, that's exactly right. He sold um, little, if, if anything, really, during his life. I think one or two um, objects through his brother. I mean, his brother probably negotiated yeah. those those deals. Well, and you just think of what was popular in the academy at the time. Right. And yeah. He was really an outsider. He was an outsider. He was truly an outsider. <laughs> yeah. And they need to be educated. Um, so I would explain to a patient that... Um, if you are able to reduce the pain by 50%, like they come in with pain that's 10 out of 10, and then, you know, if you can get it with, with whatever modalities you're using to 5 out of 10, you can publish that if, you, if this is due to some new, new treatment that, you know, you found or whatever. That's considered an excellent result. And so you have to be realistic. I mean, a lot of times I think that um, patients are unhappy because they come in with these unrealistic expectations that the pain is going to vanish. And... So they, they, they need to be educated that that is not the way it works with pain, that uh, a realistic goal is to get a maximum of 50% pain relief. And the, the idea is to get the pain down to where it doesn't take over your brain to where you can't think of anything else. Hi, you guys. We are back. We've got some events for tonight. Um, you know, it's your Labor Day weekend, so there's honestly not a whole lot going on in Missoula. But... Today is First Friday, and so we've got some artwork. Um, as always, I like to start off our First Fridays with children's activities and then art. So up first, we have Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library at 1030. This is for babies ages birth through three years to sing songs, learn finger plans, ner- learn finger rhymes, and hear nursery rhymes, and uh, finger plays. Yeah, you know, little activities. Uh, and then Family Story Time is at the Public Library, also at 1030 is for an older crowd, and is a theme story time on the Dragon Rug, which may include songs and an art activity. Up next is Preschool Playgroup, that's over at Roots Acro Sports Center, starts at 11, so this is ages walking um, through five years, and it's $8 to drop in or $12 for siblings, they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and the parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. At Spectrum Discovery Area, the Discovery Bench is SPIN in the Brain Lab or Brain Dissections. And then they're going to be teaching Mandarin at the Children's Museum of Missoula starting at 11 until 11.30. And now we have got um, a couple, oh no, a couple more kids activities. There's a teen writers group at 3.30 at the Missoula Public Library. And then spider feeding is at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium at four. They're feeding Rosie, the uh, rose hair Chile, the, let's see, Chilean rose hair tarantula. Yeah. Okay, and so now I've got some artwork for you guys. So Don Jones has got wildlife photography. This will be at the Montana Natural History Center. It starts at 4.30. Um, at Clyde Coffee, we've got patched together art by Lady Pajama. Starts at five. Uh, she uses all sorts of paper and media together to form art. The show features her biggest piece of art yet. And then so I've got an example of what her artwork looks like. That'll be at Clyde Coffee starting at five o'clock. And then up next we have Good Medicine Acupuncture and Massage. They have a grand opening. So they've got artwork there from Larry and Christina Sear as well as some beats from uh, Coach Shane. And then they also um, are going to have some artwork. So if you guys will take a look at their artwork, that's like their logo, and then they'll have other artwork as well. That's You'll really be cool. Able to, yeah, thanks, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Finally coming to the party, huh? Uh, over at Four Ravens Gallery, the North meets the South. It starts at 5 p.m. This is a black and white photography exhibit on display sept- September 2nd through October 2nd at the Four Ravens Gallery in Missoula. 
Um, and it's, what it is is black and white photography exemplifies contemporary realism, and each photograph is completed as an archival print in editions of three. Over at the Radius Gallery, they've got their second annual juried exhibit that starts at 5 o'clock. And so it's called The Changing Moment, and this year's jurors are Hadley Ferguson, Chrissy Scott, and Liz Dye. And they've selected over 100 artworks by 60 artists from 10 different states. And their artist responds to this year's theme, The Changing Moment. Um, and it will be a mix of paintings, drawings, photography, metalwork, ceramics, and mixed media with realistic and impressionistic figures and landscapes. So I'll give you guys an example of what some of their artwork is going to look like and what you can expect to see from there. Looks like layered paintings. And a nice little collage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And then up next, uh, Melvin Cooper has got a show. It's called My Forest. This is at A3 Convergence Gallery. He is a feature painter. Um, and look, it looks like he's set out to explore the micro world around him, a conceptual forest of greeny, greenery experimentation. So then, this is what you guys can expect to see from his artwork. Up next, we have got First Friday event with Emma Wicker. She's going to be showing her paintings at Sushi Hana, and she's only 16. So go out there, show some high school support. That's cute. Uh, and then over at the artist shop, they've got Pastoral Scumlings with Annie Allen. Um, and it looks like her art is about the earth that surrounds us, life is ever-changing, emerging, merging, and transforming in small, subtle ways. So her uh, art reflects that. And you guys can take a look at, this is what you can expect. Hang on one sec. Okay, yes. This is what you can expect to see from Annie Allen. Pretty cool. All right, and then up next, we've got Stephen Glukert, Stephen Glukert, who is the curator of the Missoula Art Museum. He's got recent works coming out. He, he's the uh, former curator. Former curator of the Missoula Art Museum. He's got recent works coming out. He'll be at Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing. It's a series of 40 small interactive works taking on the big Montana landscape. So you guys can take a look at what to expect from him. Pretty great. All right, and then up next, over at Betty's Divine, they've got Nothing But Trash Art Show. Um, and so what it is is Adadale, Adelaide Gale, she continues to mine the garbage heap and she mixes trash with treasures, but trash can become treasures. Mm. So her artwork are all things that she has found in the community and put together. And so this is what you guys can expect to see from her artwork. <clears throat> it's really creepy, I like that. Yeah, Trash is fun, trash is fun to make things out of. Over at Imagination Brewing Company, John Cadote, he's a Native American artist. Starts at five o'clock, he will have his images of ghost riders, powwow dancers, and Native American themes on display at Imagination Brewing Company. Then over at Bathing Beauties, we've got beadwork by Susan Dotson. It starts at 5 p.m. And you guys can expect to see this stuff from her. She's been making, doing beadwork for a very long time. And as you can see, that's very intricate. I tried my hand at beadwork one time, and it's really, really hard. <laughs> uh, and then over at Fact and Fiction, starting at 5.30, Kate Davis is uh, signing a book. It's called Birds Are People Too, so you guys can go by there. And then the Clay Studio of Missoula has got a gallery reception. It's called Animal, Vegetable, Mineral. And so it's nine ceramic artists demonstrate the myriad forms, approaches, and concepts that can be created with basic materials using from the earth. So that as you guys can expect to see from them. All right. And then our last uh, First Friday event is a traffic signal box dedication. So we saw a great video earlier this week from Scott about those. And so they're located on I-90 Interchange and Reserve, uh, Reserve and Mount, Reserve and South, Reserve and Kent, and Brooks and Door Lane. So there are several, and then uh, maybe, and then Scott, are you planning on putting that video on our channel? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So that video will be on our channel, and then when that comes up, uh, Scott will tell you about it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll tell you more about it. Yeah, it'll be good though, in like a month. Everything always comes in like a month. Yeah, usually. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay. And then I've got some music for you guys tonight. 
There's an Irish music session at the Uni Club at 6 o'clock. Uh, George Carlton is at Tenspoo Vineyard and Winery, also at 6 o'clock. We've got the Gallatin Grass Project at Montana Distillery at 6 o'clock as well. Dog Breath, uh, Rooster Sauce and Wrinkles will be at the Palace at 9. Fish Bowl Friday, Body Talk, The Color of Music will be at Monks also at 9 o'clock. We've got Wartime Blues with Hermania Jean and Genghis Fawn. That'll be at the uh, VFW also at 9 o'clock. Double Down Band will be at the Sign Rise Saloon at 9. Dodgy Mountain Men will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 9.30 as their album release party. And then Muds Like Charlie will be at the Union Club also at 9.30. That's what's going on in your community for First Friday for children's events and musical events. Uh, as always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net for all the things that I've talked about. But now we're switching gears. We're going over to Musical Notes with ASAP Adonai. I'm going to buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellas cannot steal. And then the flirty, flirty guys with their flirty, flirty eyes will have to flirt with dollies that are real. When I come home at night, she'll be waiting. She'll be the truest doll in all this world. I'd rather have a paper doll to call my own than have a fickle-minded real-life gal. <laughs> what, a, what a line. Anyway, those lyrics come from our guest on today's musical notes. The name of that song is Paper Doll. Paper Doll was the B-side of a record of our guest in 1943, recorded in 15 minutes. It sold six million copies and became our guest's biggest hit. Originally, the four kings of harmony, John Jr., Herbert, Harry, and Donald Mills, known to the world as the Mills Brothers, and there they are. That's their classic, iconic album cover there, one of them. Anyway, the Mills Brothers, they were an African-American jazz and pop vocal quartet of the 20th century and they made more than 2,000 recordings that combined more than 50 million copies and it garnered them at least three dozen gold records and they were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 1998. And if we got that video, let's catch them in action. There they are on the Lawrence Welk Show, they're being introduced. Now this brother on the far left, his name is Herbert. And then the second brother on the left, his name is Donald. The man with the glasses, he's the lead singer. His name is Harry. And their, their oldest brother, John Jr., passed away in 1936. And so Norman Smith went on to become their vocalist here. And uh, while this is going on here, in 1930, this group was so popular, they were the first African-American group to have a network show on the radio. That's how popular they were. Their first recording was a song called Tiger Rag, which went nationwide. It became number one in the charts, and it sold also one million copies, and it was awarded the gold disc for RIAA. They had another hit called Lazy River in the 30s also, and this is interesting here. They had a hit on CBS from 1930-1931 on the Fleischmann Yeast Hour with Rudy Valley. They appeared in films starting in 1932. In 1934, they gave a command performance for British royalty, and um, they performed for King George V. Queen Mary and their mother. That's how popular this group was because they not only toured across the United States, they toured all around the world. Here they are in the Dean Martin show as they were getting older. And with the, when the rise came of rock and roll, in the case of this group, they stood strong. They had another hit during their um, rock and roll era in the 50s, 1952, called Glowworm. <laughs> and it peaked number 10 in the, U in the UK single charts in 1953. So this group just kept going and kept going until they finally got older and eventually started passing. And Donald was the surviving brother after he lost all his family there. And he was presented in 1998 with the wow. Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement on behalf of his family. So that's kind of a flyover of the Mills Brothers. They were just probably one of the most popular African-American quartet group in history. And they left the world some great music, but they'll always be remembered for their song, Paper Doll. 
And on that note, I will stop. Nice. Thank you very much, Asaph. So yeah. is the last brother still alive? No, I think he's gone now. Yeah, so they're gone. all gone. They're yeah. all gone now. Cool. They, they left the world some great music starting in 1932. Yeah, <laughs> and especially they were that big for the 40s and 30s. They had to be really good. Yeah, I mean, they did films. They did mm -hmm. uh, movies and performing all over the world. Nice, you know? cool. This is definitely one of my favorite pictures of this. It's, yeah. it's such a cool little picture. I don't know why. It just really, like... Like they're just all looking at their brother on the guitar. Well, it's yeah. funny because he's not the brother. Oh, right. Right. Well, no. So originally, yeah, I think this is the, the younger original brother. brother. Is he the original brother? Yeah, he's the original brother, okay. um, John Jr. But he died in 1936. Yeah, because they had three brothers, four brothers, and then one of them died. Right. And then they found, and then the father played with them for a while. Yeah, and then but that was short lived because yep. he was just the father, and then um, Norman yeah. Smith took over, and the rest is history. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice, Asaph. Thank you very much. Sure. That and was Musical Notes with Asaph out of nine. And you can um, look at the history of Wake Up Missoula by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. I found a nice segue. I wanted to get to it as quickly as possible. So. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so here it is. And uh, here is our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Facebook page or Twitter page. You can check us out at MCAT TV Missoula. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. You can like us on there. And to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. And be sure to just subscribe to us on YouTube as well, because we're both on Wake Up Missoula, which is just Wake Up Missoula, and then mm -hmm. MCAT, which is where you can see full programs and more. It's true. Yep. Including live streams and sports and all that stuff. It's great. It really uh, is. Of course, um... I'm kind of debating whether or not I should share the art boxes because I, I'm doing a short little documentary about the uh, traffic signal boxes and they are having a showing tonight. I would be there if I didn't have to do the uh, sports game and then I would send someone there if nobody was if at the sports were game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is everyone else is doing the sports game with me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. And I told and I told the, somebody there's like, oh, if you can get anyone just to get footage or anything at all, I can put in the documentary because you know like any kind of reveal where you can that, that's like perfect for any documentary but unfortunately that's just not the case so you guys can check it out if you guys want to film with your cell phones and send me the footage I would really much appreciate that. <laughs> that'd be great um, I do a Saturday event Scott I know but I, okay. I want to do, an, do art an art clip okay but I'm just trying to find if I should show the chips traffic signal box boxes I guess I don't you have it on show this part the traffic signal boxes oh there it is there I was looking for it because I thought so, I'd put it in art. Without clip. much further ado, here are the traffic signal boxes Scott went and filmed over the weekend. Yep, and when we come back, we'll have Saturday events. and I've got stuff going on on Saturday. So like I said earlier, um, it's kind of like a slow weekend. It's Labor Day weekend, and so I can imagine everyone wants to go out and go camping, so I don't have a whole lot of stuff going on on Saturday, Saturday surprisingly. Um, but we've got our farmer's market at the Red X's at 8 a.m., and then we have our people's market on Pine Street outside of Thomas Mar Bar, as well as outside of Jimmy John's that starts at 9. And then the Clark Fork Market is at Karis Park, and that starts at 8. Um, and then we have got, uh, over at Fact and Fiction, Jan Richter is going to be reading and signing her book, My Own Private Montana. That will start at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. And then over at the Butterfly House, they've got a Choose Your Own New Species Adventures. So new species are coming out all the time. And what these guys are going to do are just kind of predict to what new species you could come up with that maybe they'll find. And so I just want to show you guys a picture that was on uh, their event page. Because I think it's so cool. This is like this really bright, spiky caterpillar. 
And this is like a new species that they found that you could even create or come up with. Um, I just thought that was cool. Those things look neat. Over at the Garden of 1000 Buddhas out in Arli, uh, they've got a garden tour at one o'clock and then they have a guided meditation at two o'clock. This happens all summer long, it has been going on all summer long and their last weekend is October 1st. So you guys have another month to do this. We've got Animal Olympics at the Montana Natural History Center that starts at 2 p.m. Um, and so they're pretty much just going to see how you can, you're gonna make your way through each Olympic event. It's gonna be like competing against a mountain lion and a long jump or versus a great blue heron in the one-legged stand. So for the afternoon, you're gonna learn fun facts about animals and make your way through the Olympic events to see if you can, you know, beat them. Yeah. <laughs> You'll even make a medal at the end. Cool. And now we've got some music for Saturday. Way Cool Music is at Ten Spoon Vineyard Winery at 6. Government Mule, the Smoke and Mule Tour, will be at uh, Big Sky Brewing Company at 6.30. We've got Andrew Bird at the Wilma at 7. Latin Dance Nights are at Downtown Dance Collective at 8 o'clock. Um, and then the Scurfs, Cane of Fable, Party Goers, and Velvet Handlebars will be at the BFW at 8. At the Roxy, they've got a puppet show. This is put on uh, Magic Society. And it's a psychedelic puppet and video show hosted by Buddy and Friday Hanks. Uh, this event is for adults. Content and humor may be inappropriate for children. So it's an adult puppet show at the Roxy Theater at 8. Ladies' Night is at Monks at 9 o'clock. So that means there'll be, uh, looks like there'll be lady DJs, lady drink specials, and lady power. That sounds great. Absolutely, with Chris Moon is at the Badlander at 9. We've got Money Penny at the Union Club at 9.30. Uh, Nashville 406 is at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. And then Jones Zen is at the Top Out Lounge at 10. So if you guys want to find out more events going on in your community, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the Independent, the University of Montana website, or the Missoulian for more events. I get everything from uh, MissoulaEvents.net, so you can check out everything I've talked about, things I may have skipped over, and things that are happening on Sunday and Monday. Yeah. Uh, but now we're switching gears yes. back to, we have city council, Scott. Yes, we do have some city council. So I have tell us about that. admin and finance and okay. land use and planning. So land use and planning, they're really um, hit, hitting into full gear with this whole R Missoula plan. Mm. And one of the things with R Missoula was implemented in a way to create a growth inward policy. And in this particular meeting, their change of the conditional use of microbreweries is to permitted, which basically means they want to be able to throw, uh, go, have a streamlined process um, to see if a brewery can go in certain areas like residential and see if they can get approval. Because um, so they talked about this in this meeting, but along with that, they also talked about unit, like commercial dwelling units versus residential dwelling units. Because you are you live in a you live in a residential dwelling unit. I believe so. Yeah, because that's. I think that's the maximum unit is like four or eight, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you live in a commercial, they can go up to 40 units. Oh, so they're trying to figure out a way to streamline and have like one that's kind of like kind of like splice the two together, but also be able to encourage commercial dwelling units to go smaller than their uh, than their maximum cap. You know, nice. just kind of like encourage that with the whole Army's of growth policy. So of course, this first part of it, it was basically about um, Lavelle Means, and she's talking about um, urban development. Oh. work and recreate within minutes of each activity and is supportive of 24-7 activity areas. It defines the urban center as a concentration of high intensity commercial entertainment and other similar uses. In addition, the downtown master plan's commercial designation also identifies restaurants and drinking establishments as being appropriate in this particular area known as the CBD. All right, so that was kind of like the basic thing, and, and I'll, I'll help clarify what she was basically talking about. Um, let's see. So um, she says that clubs and taverns are prohibited in certain residential areas, but since downtown is changing, they want to kind of implement this new permit process because a lot of the bars and taverns are in a conditional use, which means uh, there's a lot of areas which could have like um, breweries or taverns and like commercial areas, but then like there's residential areas nearby. It's, it's really weird because I live in a commercial dwelling unit area, yet I live right next to houses. Mm. So it's really interesting how like, you know, like, like, cause mine is definitely commercial dwelling yeah. unit because it's so many different um, apartment complex and stuff like that. So, and so are they talking about how they don't want these commercial dwelling units in neighborhoods? 
they, they're working on a permit process to figure out a way so that um, help encourage um, commercial use in some residential areas mm. as well. Maybe like, because if you, like I was I, I was talking about this with uh, um, Asaf on his uh, show the other day. Mm -hmm. Remember when I was talking about like, well, like uh, being able to put taverns in like close yeah. near suburban areas type of stuff because why would, would you want to like put a bar where, where you live so far away? Because exactly. the encouragement is like, if you're going to drink, shouldn't you not be encouraged to drive? Mm -hmm. You'd be encouraged to walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the, one of the reasons why they want to kind of like be part of this growth inward policy is to create areas in which people can um, recreate and live in the same area rather than worrying about uh, going from um, across town and maybe drinking or being buzzed. Mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, continuing on to uh, the rest of what I'm talking about is Lavelle also talks about some of the options for residents to expand and grow if they want to have certain uh, area houses or more units. So this is what she had to say. It's an option that might be closer to the needs of development projects and in that way helps to um, reduce concerns in neighborhoods as well. Because often if you hear somebody saying, well, I'm only going to do, you know, 20 dwelling unit per acre project, but the zoning option they have is RM145, in our neighborhoods you're going to be concerned like, well, I know you're saying 20 now, but you can do 43. This is a way of getting something a little closer and another option in that mid-range for, for people to actually, I think, also um, fit and work with neighborhoods. Yeah. So this is just a way for, uh, you know, like not only streamline it, but also open communication between neighbors and commercial um, development. So the next one is uh, Emily, um, Emily Bentley. Uh, she explains uh, further and speaks of some concerns that people may actually have about the whole permitting process. I want to build something mid-size, but the only zoning that it it fits under is a lot, you know, super high density, and then, it, you know, adjacent neighborhoods get really upset. They're like, we think this project looks really good, but what happens if they tear down or decide to build twice as big, you know, in, in, in 10 years? And, and so we hear that a lot. So this, this lets people, developers, ask for the zoning that they're actually going to want to use. Go ahead. All right. So um, the next part of this is, let me just go to my notes. Um, Lavelle talks about the issues with gross, uh, growth inwards in terms of density. So this is what she had to say. And she has some um, visual examples to kind of show of some of the new um, units and uh, stuff that actually uh, has been built over the, over the course of the last couple of years in Missoula. What is um, the Corso? I didn't get the, the land it's area much for it. I think it's think more it's, dense. Yeah. It's, it was like a, ooh. Yeah. I don't have the land area for it. I did grab some information. I have it. But so, so this is 22. They could have built, or, or you know, even some of the smaller ones that are at 19 or 18 or 16. They could have built or anything after 16, so 17. They could have built anything up to Corso, and this sort of gives them an option to actually have a zoning for. What All right, sorry about that. That was weird. I could have sworn that I had a whole, there was like a whole explanation thing in there. I guess I mis uh, misappropriated the timing of that particular quote. Um, let's see. So dwelling units are weird because developers can build up to 40 dwelling units in commercial uh, lots like, like Equinox, Solstas, and while well, residential areas are up to like 20 units. Um, well, I'm not sure about 20 units. I'm, th I'm pretty sure that a lot of residential areas only allow like up to 8 or 10 units in those areas. So it, it, there's just a lot of like permitting and just trying to figure out ways to um, encourage commercial dwelling units to be a little bit smaller and be a little, little more less encroaching and less dense for a lot of residential areas that are nearby because it's, it's if you look at the um, they, they, they did show the map and there's like little blotches on the map that basically show some areas are commercial which are kind of like smack dab in the middle of residential particular areas like oh this is just for commercials and this is just the, this is residential and you can't do it this here but two blocks down you can do whatever you want which is interesting if you took a look, take a look at the map so um, Emily Bentley does have some concerns about uh, smaller dwelling units oh wait Okay, so the, uh, this is more continuation of 
Um, just more concerns about that. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a good quote, trust me. It's Emily Blaney. Sign something with their bank, promising they wouldn't do something, you know, like we've put conditions on that promise that they wouldn't have future higher density because um, we didn't have the right tools. So, And I think projects have even um, been withdrawn because... Neighbors, yeah. Be because of that concern. Um, and, I th and I believe there's a need for a mid-range zoning tool. The, 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 next, the next zone that we're going to talk about um, maybe fits that question a little bit better because it's a artisan use piece. All right, so, oh, man, I think I basically explained it to you. Well, all these quotes <laughs> are just not really helping one way or another. I know. I think you're doing a better job than these quotes. Guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Okay. You're so. actually talking about it in ways that I can understand. Like sometimes we go through city council and I'm like, I don't know what's going yeah. on. And so this time I get it. And I think it's because of you and not the quotes. <laughs> good job, Scott. I, have, I could have sworn I got some good quotes. It's like I was sometimes watching it. I was spending all day Thursday yeah. trying to like get this ready and planned and whatever. Not all day Thursday. Sometimes whatever. that happens. It's a good so chunk of Thursday. I feel like sometimes the city council website will like, you'll think you've got something and it's maybe like, the seconds are off on your computer. Yeah. Whereas this computer. Oh yeah, because they always know? update it, and the mm -hmm. sire is kind of ridiculous. But of yeah. course, you can find out more information by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us or look up City of Missoula on any search engine. You can find these meetings and more. And I'll show you that after this next meeting. And of course, um, it all really de basically um, it all really depends on some of the areas. Some places want nothing to do with multiple unit structures, but because they don't want to match, um, they don't match the look and space of the area, regardless of commercial residential use so um, yeah I just want to end on that note just like you know mm -hmm. well now I have admin and finance so I just oh. want to end that land use and planning on that note and admin finance they're talking about uh, relief for uh, city property tax so of course uh, city oh. property tax increase has gotten a lot of slack around town and like with any tax increase and it, it can be hard for some folks out there so the city is talking about creating a property tax relief fund um, it is intended to uh, broaden the assistance options for citizens who are on fixed incomes and or marginalized and are disproportionate. Uh, uh, I can't read it. I can say it, but I can't read it. <laughs> uh, disproportionately? Disproportionately. Yeah, affected by the increase of property taxes. So this is Julie Armstrong, and she's spearheading this new program. And, um, I mean, it, it takes money to run a city, and that's our tool to run the city is, is property taxes. But I think that there may be opportunities to help those folks out um, in some small way. It's been done in other cities, and I would like to establish a fund that can be funded voluntarily by citizens and, and corporations, which would be tax deductible. Um, the city would hold it and administer it through a set of, of parameters. Um, for instance, folks that are already LEAP eligible, which is a low-income um, util utility program, they would instantly be eligible for this. They would have to apply annually, and if it's something that staff could not do, I would propose that we would form a committee that could look at those applications and make sure the folks are eligible. Um, All right, so um, that, that's one of the options that she wants to put into place. Um, hmm. The next part is uh, Julie also talks about some of the programs people can get um, to become tax-exempt for seniors, low income, and beyond. So she talks a little bit more about this in terms of who is qualified to, you know, get tax a relief fund for the increase of the property tax. The remainder, after they have applied for all state exemptions, um, seniors can get a thousand dollar exemption from the state, and then there is um, another exemption program where if you're low income you can get up to 80 percent off your tax bill however most people don't qualify they make too much so they get they get in that 30 percent range we're offering well my proposal is to offer 20 percent off of their city tax bill so if your portion let's say your tax bill is 2500 and your city taxes portion is 750 of that we'd be giving you 20 percent off the 750 and that would be the contribution that we would be making out of this fund all right, so um, that's 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 basically it in a nutshell, right there about the fund. But of course, there's um, definitely some issues in terms of, of 
implementing a new relief fund and of course like uh, the city would be looking at people's records and uh, they would have to basically the, w when she says she wants to form a committee people would have to look at people and see if they're low income and that's also a really private issue for a lot of people who are low income and um, on welfare or any other programs as well so uh, Marilyn Marler kind of continues this um, a little bit understanding and, and maybe uh, it's expanded since my the first time I talked with Julie about it was I thought it was for old, older people or disabled people on fixed incomes who already own their house but the property tax bill could be a, a real hardship um, <clears throat> so otherwise those are good points about um, you know it's not going to it's not going to do it's not going to address affordable housing um, but that doesn't mean it couldn't make a big difference for some people on fixed incomes. So I, I support it. All right. So she um, definitely supports this because it, it, it's it, it's a relief fund. It helps people who you know who can't necessarily pay the property taxes. And Julie Armstrong um, base, ends with this quote, kind of like explaining a little bit more about this. And my ward in particular has a lot of folks on fixed incomes, and I, I don't expect the cost of running city business to go down. Um, but I would love to be able to offer them something to say, I, we understand you can't keep absorbing this all the time. We'd like you to step forward, put an application in, and see if we can help you out with this. Um, and, I, and I want it to be a long-term tool that we can continue to use as we work on. I, you know, I didn't say it in the last session. I would love to build a tiny home community where everybody who needs a home has the ability to buy and own a home. That's, that's not going to happen right away. But... The, the issue of folks that have life situations that prevent them from paying their entire tax bill, that's going to happen no matter what. And it's going to happen for different reasons at different times, and, and I really think we need to have something in place where neighbors can help one another. Yeah, so, yeah, this is just uh, one of the things that they're proposing for the admin and finance. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll end on that note. This will be discussed and figured out in the future meetings. You know, one of the things is that it's privacy. You know, like, privacy is a big issue in, um, in this relief fund because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, um, I want to be eligible for this tax relief fund. And, of course, they do all these meetings on television and on public. So mm -hmm. they want to figure out a way so it, people aren't be like, oh, Jerry Smith is on welfare. Hmm, I didn't know that. What a jerk. Uh, yeah. yeah. For sure. I get it, that. It, it, like, the welfare is a definitely a huge stigma for a lot of people. Yep. Yep. People yep. like who are on SNAP or, you know, EBT and all those programs that basically help a lot of fam a lot of families. Or mostly it's usually a lot of single families mm -hmm. who are just going through, like, either divorce mm -hmm. or, you know, they only have Illness, one in income yeah. household, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Lots of kids. Yep. Yep, it's true. Cool. Well, keep us posted. Yeah, so I'll keep you posted. There is no city council meeting um, next Monday either, mm -hmm. so Never there will be did. talk more about community meetings. This is a lot of their busy work they're trying to get through, and then, of course, they'll probably have a big, huge uh, list of agenda, consent agenda items for your Monday and your second um, Monday in September. And it is it is uh, September, and I'm really it's happy true. that it's September. August is long gone. Goodbye, summer. Hello, yep. fall. Famous Francis can't celebrate his birthday month anymore no he can't <laughs> <laughs> september is upon us uh fall the first year falls in a couple weeks and i'm mostly very excited about this month because one of my best friends moved over to south america in march at the end of march and she'll be back moving back to montana um in the middle of september what? yeah for a couple months so i'm very very that's, very that's excited. really great yes i'm super excited like every day i'm just like can't wait to hang out with her yeah, because yeah. she's. You said that she was gonna move there like for like a couple of years. That's what I thought, and then yeah. she's gonna come back, save up some money, work a little bit, and then move back down there. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. That's like a, every that's day because she's so like excited. your bestie. My bestie. Yeah. She's like the type of person where we'll show up at the same party and have the same outfit on, basically. <laughs> or like we've got like the same ideas, same thoughts about things, same personalities, same emotions. I'm learning more and more. It seems like you guys are more friend. like frenemies. No, she's like, we're like each you other. You like, you, you come <laughs> in the same room and you're like, we're in the same outfit and you're like, mm. No, we just look at each other and we laugh and we're like, oh my God. Because, <laughs> yeah, we'll just like show up in the same outfit and we're just like, mm, who's going to change? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and not like the same exact outfit. It'll just be like the same like, like thing. You know, it'll be like a dress with leggings and combat boots. 
you know, it'll be like that specific, but it won't be like the same. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, okay, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good weekend. You guys can check out uh, the live uh, our live um, broadcast mm -hmm. of the Sentinel High School sport. I actually I, I didn't even know when uh, I, I didn't actually know who they're playing, but yeah, it's Sentinel It'll High School tonight. and they're playing another team. And yep. it's a home game. It's gonna be at Missoula uh, Stadium. And if you guys can't make it, you can always watch it on MCAT or online MCAT.org. It will be live streaming on our high school sports page. Actually, I might as well just show you. Yeah. Here's the here's the and, nice uh, little page. Tonight. You'll just click on high school sports and it'll bring you to that page. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. Yep. Just that easy. And you guys remember to go check out lots of artwork. Tonight is First Friday, so all up and down Higgins will be artwork and free wine and free food. Uh, that's always fun. And you can check out events for tomorrow. Go to MissoulaEvents.net if you uh, want to find something to do but not quite sure what's going on. And of, of course, um, the Zootown Arts Community Center's very last uh, chance to go see their mm -hmm. art. So we're going to end with ASAP, and then we're going to show you this video just to kind of wrap up the rest of our show. So, so uh, we have no show on Monday. We'll see you guys back on Wednesday. For Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's ASAP Adonai. <laughs>